Hey ghosts, welcome to the end of 2023. This time last year, I spent weeks writing, filming and editing a wrap up of the entire year. And I'm very proud of it. And I cannot bring myself to do it again. It was so much work. And there are certain things that I really don't want to talk about. So instead, I'm doing a top 10 weird things that happened this year. I was going to just focus on paranormal things, but I couldn't quite find enough. So we're going with weird, and I am defining weird as aliens would think that this is embarrassing for us. Because that's the real reason why we redefined the kilogram a few years ago. In 10th place is NPC streaming. If you don't know, an NPC is a non-playable character in video games. The people that stand at the side of the game and say meaningless arbitrary things whilst you, the main character, actually play the game. And what's happened is people are making videos where they impersonate a non-playable character. Now, NPCs are in video games, usually to make a world seem fuller and busier and like people live there. So if you're running around a town, you'll see NPCs dotted all over the place. And usually what they say and do is meaningless, but sometimes it can be kind of quirky and fun. And some people are making videos that actually very well capture the beautiful absurdity of an NPC. For the most part, people are just sitting on live streams doing whatever people ask them to do in the comments and they make a lot of money from it. It is absolutely embarrassing that our existence hinges on doing stuff and trading little coins. But beyond that, it's embarrassing that we're getting money for pretending to not have autonomy. Humans will do anything for money. Hell, if you throw me a YouTube thanks, I'll pretend to eat imaginary ice cream. Mmm, pistachio is such an underrated flavor, but dulce de leche is my favorite. Mmm, pistachio is such an underrated flavor. That took way more effort than I thought it would. Maybe I have a newfound respect for people who do this NPC content stuff. No, no, I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> In ninth place, we have some cryptid action. On the 10th of October, a woman called Shannon Parker was traveling on a train through Colorado with her husband when they saw something strange in the mountainside around them. They were absolutely sure that what they were looking at was Bigfoot. So the person sitting next to them captured a quick video of the action. Of all of the iterations of mountain dwelling beings that are a cross between man and beast, Bigfoot is my least favourite. It's just deeply uncool. <laughs> Like, there are iterations of this thing all over the world. Some of them are made out of shadows or are extremely big. And Bigfoot just kind of feels lazy. I'd also rather meet something more fantastical, like Mothman or Nessie or Tommy Wiseau. It's a difficult one to be excited about because Bigfoot just looks like someone in a suit. And we're not that good at telling animals and people in a suit apart. A zoo recently had to release evidence that one of their bears was in fact a bear. This next one I want to handle with a lot of care because it is a tragedy with a side of absurdity. On the 29th of October, actor Matthew Perry passed away at age 54. I have to admit that I have a special place in my heart for Friends. It's so comforting, I really enjoyed the show, and Chandler was one of my favourite characters. So I was pretty gutted to hear that Matthew Perry had passed. Almost immediately, his death was deemed a conspiracy. In the days leading up to his death, Perry had been posting a lot of bat symbols and referring to himself as Matman. Which honestly, if that were a cryptid, I'd be in. The bat symbol in the world of Batman is used as a cry for help, as a way for the city of Gotham to say, we need you Batman. So people were saying that Matt's use of the bat symbol was him crying for help. But if he was calling himself Matman, how could he be crying for help? One of his posts even joked that he was watching over people, not that he needed someone to watch over him. With the deepest respect, Gen X will post any wild garbage online with absolutely zero intention behind it. And millennials and Zoomers spend too much time online reading into everything, and I am proof of that. His memoir also mentioned that he made a Faustian bargain many years ago where he prayed, saying, God, you can do whatever you want to me, just please make me famous. And he alludes in his own words that he felt his struggles with addiction were the first part of that bargain, that God was doing something bad to him. So the conspiracy goes deeper thinking that 
this was the ultimate finale of that Faustian bargain and that Matt knew it was coming because the final chapter of his memoir was called Batman. I personally don't buy this conspiracy. I think that there's not enough coincidence and it's also something that's very easy to make a lot of content about and get a load of clout. And on that note, this was the year that the most popular internet content was centered around human-headed toilets. Skibbity Toilet is a viral series of videos that apparently portrays a war between toilets with human heads and humans with electronic devices for heads. Apparently it's huge with Gen Alpha and I have to admit that I've finally come to an age where I'm like, what the f is happening to us? But then I remembered that in the early noughties we had the crazy frog, so maybe just demented creepy media always has a grip on the youth. So this is a video of a singing head inside a, a toilet, yeah. And the toilet is the thing that you, yeah, the, the wee sh in, yeah. Yeah, okay. On the 13th of September, a journalist and ufologist testified to lawmakers under oath that two 1,000 year old corpses had been found in algae mines in Cusco, a city in the Peruvian Andes, and they were not part of our terrestrial evolution. This was accompanied with photographs of the corpses, which are in some way mummified. Which I guess explains why they look like an ornament that you could buy in an anthropology store. So of course there were all sorts of debates on whether this was real or fake. There has been research done on the DNA within the corpses, which has reportedly revealed that 30% of the DNA is unknown or not from any known species. Which suggests that 70% of the DNA is from known species? Who's been f***ing the aliens then? There are so many theories about this and so little excitement about it. But it's in sixth place because I think that it takes a lot of balls to die on a hill of I found some mummified aliens inside a mine. Especially when five mummified bodies you also found in 2017 that you also were sure were aliens turned out to be human children. Dolphins now have thumbs. Scientists examining a unique society of mixed species dolphins in Greece recently discovered a unique specimen with thumbs. Now, opposable thumbs are one of the things that has given humans the unique advantage of becoming the dominant life force on Earth. So I fully welcome our dolphin overlords. Some people call them hoop jumping tuna mar- I can't say it. Hoop jumping tuna munchers. I call them chief. Oh. Boss sometimes, maybe even your highness. This article by Vice cites a scientist who says that it's just a genetic defect. But like, that's how evolution works, right? Genetic defects help species become stronger and the fittest survive and then overthrow their immediate threat. Humans are not ready for that fight. We're soft and weak and dolphins can already breathe air. They could get on land quite easily. Next thing, they'll have feet. They'll be able to walk. They'll be able to make feet content. They'll rinse us for all our money. They'll overtake the economy. They'll crash it and humans will be over. In fourth place, the doomsday clock was adjusted. Now, prior to this year's adjustment, I didn't actually know this existed. But of course, something called the doomsday clock exists. We are in full moralist chaos these days. The clock serves as a metaphor for how close humanity is to destroying itself, with midnight being an op apocalyptic event. It was set at seven minutes to midnight when it debuted in 1947 and has since changed 25 times. Honestly, as far as years go, I would have thought 1947 was a wee bit after. We would be worried about total annihilation. It was first adjusted in 1949 to three minutes following the Soviet Union's first successful atomic bomb test. And the safest we've ever been was 17 minutes in 1991 after the Cold War ended. I was born in 1991 and as a delusional optimist, I'm gonna relate my birth to a worldwide pacifism. Although now I feel like I had some responsibility to keep the peace and I failed. So apparently the Bulletin Science and Security Board meets twice a year to decide if it should be moved. And at the meeting before 2023, the board felt a new time was needed to reflect the war in Ukraine, its effects on climate change, Russian threats of nuclear warfare and activity in the Chernobyl and Zaporizhia nuclear reactor sites. Zaporizhia? Zaporizhia. 
I'm morbidly fascinated about what it must be like to have the discussion of when to move the clock and if they'll move it to midnight before or after humanity destroys itself. If I'm still around when midnight happens, I'll try to make a video about it, but to be honest, the grind will still be in full swing and my landlord will still be looking for rent. Back in March this year, an Australian company decided to resurrect the flesh of the long extinct mammoth and create a meatball. A mammoth meat meatball. They were able to use some preserved mammoth DNA to create the flesh, but nobody has actually eaten the mammoth meat because we're worried that we can't digest it. I'm sure that's the only reason that no one has stepped up to the plate. The project was a bit of a PR stunt to prove that lab-grown meat can be created relatively easily and it's also a sustainable alternative to farmed meat. And it's a noble intention, but mark my words, a mammoth meat scandal is on the way. It's a bit annoying because when when I use the word mammoth, I actually kind of use that all the time to describe something big. And when I say mammoth meat scandal, it just sounds like I mean big meat scandal. But I'm trying to talk about the same type of thing as the horse meat scandal or the chlorine chicken scandal of this year. I think at some point we're probably going to find mammoth in our everyday lasagnas that we buy at the supermarket. And it's not going to kill us, but it is going to make us feel weird because we literally never stop to think about what we're putting in our mouths. Anyway, would you eat a mammoth meatball? If someone else tried it first, then I probably would. If IKEA started doing mammoth meatballs, I definitely would. I'm telling you, I'm getting the fuck off, and there's a reason why I'm getting the fuck off, and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two fucks, but I am telling you right now, that motherfucker mother back there is not real. That motherfucker back there is not real. I have watched this so many times. It is morbid getting pleasure out of this when that woman, that woman is obviously in distress. But what a monologue. If you are the type of person who would like to get into a conservatoire or Juilliard or wherever it is actors go to train, this is your ticket. The whole lead up, you're like, what's happened? Why is she so distressed? And then she announces that someone on the plane is not real. Now she did clarify later in some interviews that she didn't really mean that there was an unreal person. She said that she was having an argument with someone and this was a figure of speech, as in they're being stubborn or nasty. But it doesn't matter. No one cares. We're all swept up in the madness of there being a demonic plane ghost. At the time, people were justifying the outburst relating it to religious experiences where the devil would present itself before causing serious harm. So some people thought she'd seen an alien or a lizard person or the men in black, even after she said it was just an argument. This is my number two because of how big it blew up. Everyone I knew had seen this woman cry, that mother back there is not real. And it was fun. There's so many things she could have seen, so many things to cut it with. That mother back there is not real. And you can it was conspiracy, meme culture, and dramatic soliloquy all rolled up into one. Okay, it's time for the weirdest thing that happened this year. The thing that if aliens were visiting, they'd be like, what the f is wrong with you? The number one weird thing that happened is that aliens exist and no one cares. In the summer, some former military officials testified to the US Congress that the US government has UFOs. One of the whistleblowers said that the US government possesses retrieved intact and partially intact craft of non-human origin. There was tons of coverage on this because unlike the Peruvian mummy guy, these guys were respected members of government. They stood to gain nothing by claiming this was real. In fact, they kind of put themselves out on a limb and nobody cared at all. The reality of real life, on the ground, day-to-day -day existence has completely crushed our sense of wonder and excitement at life beyond our world. And that's the most tragically weird thing that could ever happen. So thanks for watching my top 10 weird things that happened in 2023. I'm sure I'll have missed some stuff and if I have, let me know in the comments. Let's hope we have another year of weirdness ahead of us. Aliens, if you are watching, don't concern yourself with the human race. We are not a threat. Concern yourself with dolphins. They're smarter, they're more evil, and they're fun, and they're cute, and they're so nice. And I'll see you next time.